when he was away. What is up guys? In this episode of Bike Club, we're looking at Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro 10 on my Hackintosh and answering the age-old question, which one is best? Now, on the internet, a lot of people say that Adobe Premiere actually takes better advantage of PC hardware or things like NVIDIA graphics cards and kind of non-Apple processors and stuff due to just optimization in the software. But, well, that's just people on the internet. But wait, I'm just a guy on the internet too, so. Anyways, um, today we're gonna go through both Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere and do a head-to-head -to, -head to see which one is actually faster, which one is smoother, and which one actually works better on your Hackintosh. So let me preface this with, I've been using Final Cut for a very long time. Um, before Final Cut Pro X or Final Cut Pro 10 was Final Cut Pro 7 and the whole Final Cut suite. Now, the only thing we have is Final Cut Pro 10, which is, um, kind of a slightly condensed version of the entire suite. On the other hand, we do have Adobe Premiere, uh, which I've just picked up uh, since getting this Hackintosh, mostly to see um, whether the internet was right, if uh, Adobe Premiere is in fact faster or uh, smoother perhaps than Final Cut Pro. I will say this uh, off the bat, Adobe Premiere is a much more uh, powerful software in that it has a lot more features. You also have the rest of Adobe Creative Cloud which includes things like After Effects and Photoshop and Lightroom if you're into photo editing as well as video editing. So the test we're doing today is actually pretty simple and I'm sure there's a little bit more of a convoluted way to test these in a more benchmark style but this uh, method was more of a uh, workflow oriented and actual user um, experience type of test. What we did was we took the same uh, source file, which was uh, a 1080p uh, Canon image. It was actually a slider shot from uh, episode one of uh, Bike Club. And uh, what we did was we put that into the timeline and then we uh, colored it. Uh, we stabilize it with whatever built-in stabilizer effect that uh, the respective software had. Let that render. In Final Cut, it's background rendering. In Adobe Premiere, you actually have to render it manually. And then I copied that clip over until it was 2 minutes and 20 seconds long, the entire timeline. So what we then did was export it in um, 1080p um, through H.264. And then we also exported it in uh, 1080p through Apple ProRes. Now we picked these two codecs because they're kind of the most common and H.264 especially is what you'll see most people uh, exporting and using as far as a codec goes. ProRes is used um, as well, but not to the same extent. So the results were a little bit surprising to be honest. Now we'll kick off with render times, but this test isn't really fair because uh, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro go about rendering in very different ways. So without going into too much detail, Basically, Final Cut Pro renders things in the background, so when you add an effect, it immediately starts rendering it after applying the effect. Adobe Premiere, on the other hand, you have to manually render the effect. So you'll put an effect on, uh, in my case, I use stabilization, as well as color on both um, Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. It took um, the same amount of time to apply the effect on both softwares meaning for stabilization, it has to um, analyze the footage and then it has to uh, apply the stabilization uh, through whatever um, stabilization engine that it uses. Now I started the clock as soon as I applied the effect. And as soon as that effect was applied, I went in and started rendering it, or in Final Cut's case, it started rendering automatically. Now this is where things got kind of interesting. Adobe Premiere took a minute and two seconds to apply stabilization and color as well as render it all out. Final Cut, on the other hand, took six seconds. Yes, six seconds to apply the effect, color and stabilization, and render it out. For anyone that's wondering, that's about a 90% um, difference. 
Okay, so maybe this isn't a fair test because perhaps Final Cut doesn't actually render things to, uh, I guess, full quality or write them totally, uh, such as Adobe Premiere. And this is actually kind of apparent because Final Cut actually does occasionally drop some frames when you're reviewing the footage in your preview window. Whereas after rendering, Adobe Premiere does not drop a single frame. Okay, so let's forget about rendering for now and let's move on to export times, which is actually the main thing that um, Final Cut actually falls uh, short on when it comes to using NVIDIA hardware. Now, as I explained in episode one, Final Cut Pro actually takes advantage of AMD graphics cards uh, using OpenCL uh, to actually uh, hardware accelerate their exporting and general Final Cut, you know, rendering and whatnot. Now keep in mind, this is just what the internet says and the internet also said that Adobe Premiere would take a better advantage of the Nvidia graphics uh, to actually, you know, further export times as well as rendering. But, well, uh, it didn't work out like that. I exported our two minute and 20 second sequence uh, through the H.264 codec at 1080p, and in Adobe Premiere, I got two minutes and eight seconds. But in Final Cut, I got one minute and 57 seconds. Now, this actually doesn't seem like a lot of time, and to be honest, it isn't. But percentage wise, it's about eight, eight and a half percent faster um, on Final Cut than it is on Adobe Premiere. This performance difference didn't go away when I used a different codec. I exported both sequences in ProRes 422 HQ and well, the results were, uh, they were pretty ridiculous. To export the whole sequence in ProRes 422 at 1080p, Adobe took one minute and 35 seconds, whereas Final Cut Pro 10 took 38 seconds. That's a 60% improvement. So in all three of our tests, Final Cut Pro 10 has come out on top. That pretty much debunks the claim that Adobe Premiere takes better advantage of the hardware on a Hackintosh than Final Cut Pro 10. Now, all isn't well in Final Cut land. The occasional dropped frames I was getting earlier do still happen on occasion, depending on how much stuff you have in the timeline but most of the time it's really not an issue. One thing to note though, is the stabilization built into Adobe software is miles better than the one in Final Cut. It is smoother, it looks better, both the side to side movement and the up and down movement that I got while using a cheap slider are completely gone in Adobe. Whereas in Final Cut, you can still see where the slider kind of slowed down and where it kind of sped up and a little bit of that shaking. In my personal opinion, the better color tools as well as stabilization in Adobe Premiere are a really big factor in kind of swaying me to their side. But at the same time, usability in Final Cut is just way better. And workflow wise, I can just get a lot of the small things done a lot faster on Final Cut than I can in Adobe. So that kind of puts me in a position where I would use Adobe products for things like effects, like color and stabilization, and then cut in Final Cut. Now, that may mean that I actually don't use Adobe Premiere and instead just go straight to After Effects, which actually has uh, stabilization and color grading and a lot of those things built in. One thing we are gonna be looking at in the future is Adobe Premiere on Windows versus Adobe Premiere on Mac and the performance differences between the two, because it's possible that Windows might actually take better advantage of the PC hardware that's in this Hackintosh versus OS X. So, in a later video, I'll do a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back comparison of Adobe on Windows, Adobe on Mac, and Final Cut Pro 10. In conclusion, it really doesn't matter what software you use. They kind of give you different things, and with anything, it'll give you something, it'll take something away. With Adobe, you do have to spend more time because of rendering, as well as exporting, um, but you do get a, a little bit of a cleaner workflow with less dropped frames, better effects uh, with better stabilization, far better you know, color tool, and uh, a whole list of other effects as well as add-ons and plugins that you can you know, install in order to make your editing experience you know, the best it could be. On the other hand, Final Cut's far simpler and more intuitive design makes it so that it's a little bit easier and a whole lot faster to edit. So if you're producing daily content or regular content even for YouTube or any other streaming service, it's a lot easier to use Final Cut because you can you know, push videos out far quicker, you can edit quicker. You get most of what Adobe offers with a few compromises, but it's all in the name of ease of use. So which one should you use? I for one am editing this video in Adobe Premiere as I'm trying to learn the software a little bit more, kind of get a little bit better at using it. And so more than likely I'm gonna stick with Adobe Premiere for now, but 
who's to say if I'm gonna jump back on Final Cut Pro 10 or maybe just start utilizing Final Cut and After Effects together in order to kind of get, you know, my balanced workflow. And that's about it guys. Throw us a like if you like this little experiment we did and drop a comment below if you wanna see us do the Windows versus OS 10 comparison as far as video editing goes. And if you guys have any other, you know, questions or, you know, video recommendations, just drop a comment and we'll try to get back to you as quick as we can. And as always, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Later.